find you going live. Hey, yeah. Welcome back. Here we are for another Friday. Sorry, you guys, about the uh, construction. If you catch that on the, on the track, I'll do my best to edit some of that stuff out. We're trying a little bit different uh, lighting. I don't know how that, uh, that works. Um, what the hell is that thing doing? Anyway, so we're live on TikTok uh, as well. So I hope you guys uh, stick around and um, ask questions. We'll be monitoring our uh, doggone comments and I'm um, checking it out. We've got an interesting show lined up for you today. Uh, Brett and I were talking the other day about just some like uh, problems that we see clients having and the different age categories and how there are different not just generational things, but like different problems associated with uh, each of these stages of life uh, development. So um, we wanted to kind of talk about that, share about that today. Uh, us being at a certain stage of our development and our lives, we um, face uh, certain problems that a lot of other people our age, you know, 45 to 55, right in that uh, age group, struggle with. And we've been relating it back to how we were raised and the differences in how we were raised. And then there's a whole host of challenges, you know, regarding the, you know, 25 to 35 year right. age group and then 15 to 25 and, and so on and so forth. So we're just going to talk about some of those uh, today and, uh, of course, answer any of your questions now that you have. Please feel free to, uh, to ask away. We'll answer pretty much anything or do our best to, to get into it. Um, <laughs> I forgot my iPad today, so uh, we're going to pull up uh, Brett's phone, and he's going to kind of monitor the uh, comments, so we'll do our absolute best to address uh, yes. your questions. I have it. Yeah. I have a TikTok S success. Oh, sweet. I can monitor comments. <laughs> Not that I can see them now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do our, we'll do our best. I've got the cheaters. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm good for now. So, so, yes, we were talking about, you know, Tom and I see lots of uh, different uh, clients, um, different age ranges and whatever, and... Uh, we were talking this week during one of our workouts about how uh, different age groups all seem to be struggling with the similar kinds of things. And yeah. we, were, we went down the rabbit hole of why that is. You know, why do 25 year olds all seem to share um, high anxiety, um, social anxiety, right. um, challenges with independence, challenges with independence, yeah. challenges in developing relationships yeah. um, with people their own age? Um, and why do people our age struggle with the same kinds of things? Fierce independence, um, uh, um, not being able to, uh, or being so self-sufficient, you know, um, that they can't open up and rely on other people. Um, and, right. you know... Uh, pros have, and cons. Pros mind. and cons, for sure. Um, people my generation, you know, I'm a good old Gen Xer, and... Um, um, you know, back in the day, you know, no fault of our parents. That's just how things were back then is, uh, you know, you got thrown out of the house in the morning, you know, <laughs> right. go, go play, right? Yeah. And come home when the streetlights come on, mm -hmm. you know, it's, then it'll be dinner time. I mean, there I was, were so many hours spent uh, like by ourselves, my right. sister and I, that we were just by ourselves, yeah. taking care of ourselves. For, and I remember early on, right. you know, like somebody would call and I remember the thing was uh, tell them if they ask for your parents, you know, that your parents are in the shower. Right. So people would call and they would say to my parents, like, you must be the cleanest people ever because every time <laughs> I call, you're in the shower. Right. They were out doing their thing. Yeah. I mean, that's just what parents did. Mm -hmm. um, I remember growing up, you got thrown out of the house like in the summer or on a Saturday after breakfast you, and they would lock the door. Don't, yeah. co don't come back. Yeah. If you get thirsty, go drink out of the hose. Uh -huh. I mean, kids today think about drinking out of the hose. It's like, well, oh, God. God, I need a bottled water. Right. But And wherever you were kind of at in the neighborhood around noon, that's where you ate lunch. You know, someone would throw some bologna sandwiches out the back door. Right. And, uh, you know, so you had the hose and some bologna sandwiches. Uh -huh. And then you came home for dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's just ways. But because we basically raised ourselves... Right? I mean, yeah. our parents were there. I'm not trying to knock them. My parents were great. I'm not knocking them. But just kind of that's how the things were back then. Um, but because of that, me, pe myself and people in my generation are fiercely independent. Right. Right. We, since we've been raising ourselves, we rely completely on ourselves. We don't ask for help. That's, a, that's the biggest uh, problem with, with that, is yeah. not asking for help when you absolutely need it. Right. I'll just deal with it. I, I'll, I'll manage. I'll figure it out. Pain, emotional distress. We don't share our emotions, first nope. of all. We keep those all tucked in. Those are trivial. Right. Um, 
but we, we don't. So if we're emotionally disturbed or, or tormented, we keep that in, it's eating away at us, but we never for ask sure. for help, we never share that. Yeah, for sure. And you know, since we were raising ourselves anyway, many of us became adults quick, mm -hmm. right? I mean, oh, sure. 13, 14, 15, we started you know, having sex and you know, drinking right. and you know, being adult-like behaviors. I mean, I remember going into bars when I was 15 years old, yeah. um, kinds of stuff. And we got jobs as soon as we could. And we people joined the military or they, you know, did things. They they grew up quickly. And uh, 16, this, yeah. yeah. I was tooling around town. Right. Driving people everywhere. My parents never saw me. Right. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Man, I had my I drove my mother to work in her car on my 16th birthday. No driver's license. I had a permit. Mm -hmm. Dropped her off at work, took her car to the DMV so I could get my driver's license. <laughs> And that was okay with my parents. Yeah. I mean, that's how things work back then. Yeah. And um, so I remember, got my driver's license, and that night, I had my friends in my car driving into the city. Huh? I'm, yeah. I'm 16. Mm -hmm. On my 16th birthday, we're driving into the city, yeah. crawling all around places we shouldn't have been. Yeah. Um, and it might, you know, it was okay. With, I mean, it was great. Um, so we grew up fast. We were fiercely independent. Um, and we never asked for help. So those are some of the things that, you know, some of the similarities. Right. And because of that, um, we raised our children differently, right? Mm -hmm. Every generation tries to be polar opposite. Yeah. So my parents did this and right or wrong, I'm going to try to be this. <coughs> so we became over-involved in our parents, you know, helicopter parent kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, we became over-involved with our, our, our kids and we didn't want them to make the same mistakes we did. Of course. So we... W we hovered over them. And the best way to learn things is to make mistakes. Uh -huh. You learn from failure, not from success. Yeah. So a lot of times kids, um, the kids of Gen X folks are sheltered mm -hmm. and they don't have the life experiences that they should have because you know we didn't want them to make the same mistakes. Right, so then they're out there in the world trying to navigate things and they feel like they need some sort of a uh, safety net. Uh, however, uh, that generation, the, the kids of the Gen uh, Xers, are way more in tune or in touch with uh, their emotional state. For and sure. uh, they have, uh, to some degree, better boundaries. Mm -hmm. So they know, I don't like this, this doesn't feel good, I'm not going to stick around and be privy to that, which is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge is, like you said, uh, being able to effectively deal with life and live life on life's terms and be independent, right. that's a serious challenge. Right. Um, so a lot of times when I'm dealing with somebody who's, you know, 25, 26, uh, if, if they haven't um, moved out of their parents' house, that's a goal, but they never see that as being a viable option because mm -hmm. they rely heavily, they're dependent upon their parents financially, right. uh, um, in some respects, um, emotionally, and just to keep food, you know, so they have food, shelter, things right. like that. And they have no clue on, you know, not all of them. I mean, there's some that are out there actually being prosperous. I have no idea what that is. I think people are trying to join the live or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've got lots of people joining. Yeah. Lots of hearts. Thank you for liking. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thanks. If, uh, if we don't happen to see your comments or questions, uh, please send them again, and we'll eventually, we'll eventually get to them. So All right. Yeah. Maybe there's something else uh, that, that you need for us to address or talk about today, so please send it in. We're not yeah. uh, totally set on this, uh, this topic, but we figured we want to share because this is something that people come in and and uh, have challenges with. So I have a lot of young people that are coming in um, from 15 to 30, right around that mm -hmm. age category, and they're, they're having some, uh, some challenges. Similar and, problems. And of course the parents who are independent and are trying to teach their, those lessons now after right. sheltering them for right. many years mm -hmm. uh, are frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're coming to me for help and support, like guidance, like right. how do I get them out of that? Oftentimes, they'll hear, the, the young people will hear something from me, same thing that their parents are saying now. Right. Um, and they'll then take they'll it from take us. It. <laughs> yeah. It's Isn't bizarre, but I get it. I know. Isn't that funny? We say the same things. Um, and a lot of the things that I see from 15 to 30-year-olds that, that I see is, so, Tom, when you and I grew up, we had our best friend, right? We had a ride or die Someone that oh, yeah. you counted on, someone that you can confide in, um, and they knew they weren't going to tell anybody else all your stuff, all your secrets, yeah. right? 
you asked them for advice and they gave you the worst advice ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, it didn't and seem like that at the it, time. It didn't seem like that at the time. But, you know, you learn lessons because we made lots of mistakes and we learned lessons from that. The kids that I see or the young adults that I see, 15 to 30, they don't have the, con they don't have the best friend. They didn't grow up with the concept of a best friend. Yeah. You know, their best friend was their parents. They were, yeah. Their parents were the ones that they confided in. Because we, when we grew up, right, we, you know, when we had a problem, we wouldn't go to our parents. We went to our best friend. Right. But, you know, if we showed emotion like cry, remember how many of your parents said, if you're going to cry, I'll give you something to cry I'll about. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> yeah. We were not um, encouraged right. to show emotions. We Especially were, as men or boys or whatever, you know. Exactly. You don't show emotion. Right. You got to be strong, stoic. You gotta, right. You know. Suck it up. Yeah. You know, it's just life. You'll deal with it. Yeah, deal with stuff. it. So, um, so again, um, you know, the next generation, we want to be polar opposite. So we encouraged our kids to share their emotions, talk about it. You can cry. It's okay. You can be mad. You can be sad. We can, you know, right. we can help them define that. So because we encourage that, um, you know, our kids always came to us uh, for uh, their emotional support. They didn't run to their best friend. Therefore, they didn't develop those kinds of relationships. It wasn't a needed thing. Yeah, they, they had that. They had the, their support that they needed. We got it from a best friend. They're getting it uh, yeah. many times from their parents. You know, we talk in generalities. It doesn't make it's true for everybody, uh -huh. of course, but we talk in generalities. Um, so, and when you don't have the concept of a best friend, think of the cons that come along with that, right? You lose touch with the outside, outside of your fall, small family circle, that next layer out, you yeah. know, you, you don't have, uh, you lose touch with that, or you don't make strong connections with that. Well, so the influence became social media. Right, Facebook, sure. Instagram, Snapchat, all that, and so that's the focus. So instead of having one best friend that was close that had an influence over you, and you had an influence over them, it's, uh, you know, 3,000 people, you know, right. that's in your circle. And are any one of those connections really, like, close to you? I mean, we're online. There's this concept of an avatar or presenting right. who you want other people to see. And you do you ever get to be your true, genuine, authentic self? Do you even know what that is? Right. You can hide behind the screen. You yeah. can present to the world what it is you want them to see. When we, <coughs> we didn't have screens to hide behind, we were face to face with people. And there yeah. was, I mean, you could BS your way through some stuff, but um, you, your authentic self was kind of pretty much out there. Yeah. Um, people knew what was going on. Um, you know what I love about not being the screen um, generation behind the screen all the time is there was lots of stuff we did as young people um, that we weren't proud of and we would never want filmed on <laughs> camera. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Can you there, imagine if we had cameras, what we would be doing with, with cameras? Oh, oh, man. It would have been a different experience. I'm so grateful sure. that, <laughs> that there were not. So I remember I worked in bars. Um, when I was younger, bartending, bouncing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the, the minute somebody brought a camera, like a Polaroid or something into a bar, people freaked out. They're like, uh, we don't do that. We don't yeah. do cameras, you know. They would like take a picture and then, okay, put the camera away kinds of stuff. Um, so, but now everyone's got a camera. Everyone's got a video recorder in their hand at all times. Mm -hmm. So there's a different pressure on um, young people growing up. Sure. What do I do? Is it going to be filmed? Is, you know, You're under surveillance. Right. 24-7. And the way that we grow up is we're experimenting on the adult that we want to be. When we're you know, 13 to 21, 25, whatever, yeah. you're trying on different hats. You're trying to figure out who you want to be in life. You're experimenting with clothes, with, with how you talk, with your language, with how you carry yourself. You know, you're, you're trying on different hats of how, what kind of adult do I want to be and what kind of adult is accepting. You know, yeah. we, we did all that goofy stuff. Remember, well, back in the 80s, then we had Boy George that dressed all weird, so then we all had to do wear a different... Really want to hurt me? <laughs> so then we all had stupid hats for a while. <laughs> but, yeah, right. you know, and that was never memorialized. But, mm -hmm. you know, kids wouldn't do that now because that picture of that stupid hat is going to be somebody else's, you know, uh, Instagram... <laughs> picture <laughs> forever yeah look at me i'm look like a damn lumberjack I'm not a therapist i'm stuck in the 90s right? flannels jeans tims <laughs> oh well you're trying to be uh yeah <laughs> that's funny um so i mean we see a lot of that with the uh, that whole 15 to 30 year old you know like we said the nine concept of the best friend yeah. people are are 
anxious. They're, this group is carrying so much anxiety yeah. because everything they do is under a microscope and it can be memorialized forever. Yeah. Right? You do that stupid thing and someone gets you on video and it's going to be reposted right. on Insta everyone's Instagram yeah. uh, forever. You and know, if you're doing it pressure. while you're 15, uh, keep this in mind, you know, this, not to promote any more anxiety, but if you're 30 after college and you go to a job interview, right. best believe they're going to be... Anything you put out there on the internet is out there for good forever. Right. So best believe that they're going to be researching you and looking you up. And if you've got that... Uh, wearing that, you know, uh, hoochie mama uh, outfit <laughs> or pounding uh, hey, brewskis with, with the boys and, you know, making whatever signs you want to make. Yeah. And it, that's going to be out there. That's yeah. going to be seen and viewed. Right. Yeah. No wonder why they, this group has so much anxiety. Sure. But at least they are more receptive to coming in for therapy and working on things. Oh, yeah. Um, Every generation gets better. Yeah. At, at reaching out for or at, at, at embracing help yeah. with mental health because sure. it doesn't mean that we don't have anxiety we oh, do yeah, very, very much a, or depression right uh, or a whole host of other things we just don't go out and seek the help for it because it's viewed at least in our minds as we don't want to be vulnerable we don't want to be perceived as being weak right. we want to have our things together you know right. and um, so we don't even if we do go out and get therapy uh, oftentimes I see the people that are around our age, they're not as receptive to it um, mm -hmm. because they're, I don't know if, if stuck in their ways is the best way to describe it, you right. know? Somebody might say, or I might say, you know, hey, have you tried these three things? And you know what? I've seen benefit in my own life and other people that I've helped have done these three things, whatever they might be. Right. If you try these out, you might actually experience some help and they never go out and do those things because they they this is what I've always done and I'm going to continue to do it. And even if it's not working the way that I want to do it, like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that's going to work. They convince themselves that it's not going to work uh, for right. them, you know, because they've been self-sufficient. They've been independent. You know? Well, when you grow up and parents have, not that they say this, but they have the attitude of, you know, um, work it out or, you know, if you have, oh, I'll give you something, you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. We've learned very early on to we need to handle our own emotions. Yeah. Nobody else is going to be available. I mean, we learn that hard. We're hardwired for that now. Yeah. We learn that lesson. I mean, those lessons you learn when you are young <coughs> are hardwired into your brain. You know, the part of therapy, we have to help unwire some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the human brain is a really interesting thing, and it, it is designed to learn new things. Yeah. We learn new things every single day. What we are really terrible at is unlearning stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> unlearning bad habits. Yeah. Um, that's part of what therapy is, is we try to help you with different strategies on how to unlearn stuff mm -hmm. so that you have some availability to learn new reactions to behaviors and emotions, whatever. Yeah. But when we grew up and we're hardwired to suck it up, handle it yourself, you know, when we are faced with different emotions in our life with a partner with a spouse with a kids with a co-worker with anybody yeah you know when hard emotions come up we wall up oh, yeah. right we th there's nothing for protection through. yeah that's what we know that's yeah. what um, our generation in generalities that's what we've learned to do so you know we see a lot of people that come for relationship issues because I just can't talk to her I can't talk to him well yeah. surprisingly <laughs> we were walled up mm, I wonder why, why? Is that <laughs> I was thinking um, how that programming, like you said, that our learning, uh -huh. uh, it, it's easy to say, hey, just empty out your cup, uh, but much more difficult to actually do. So, but it, you can do it. In order to learn something new, right. um, it takes repetition. Uh -huh. It takes uh, work on your part, attention to it. And you have to keep doing it until uh, that thing becomes more second nature uh, to you. So if you want to learn something new like uh, Spanish, you talked about that being your New Year's resolution for the past eight years. Right. You want to learn Spanish, it, you, you have to do it and you have to practice it. And you have, right. Through repetition, you have to go over and over and over again in order mm -hmm. to adopt that new habit, convincing yourself that this is just something that I do now every day, you know, at this time or throughout the day. Uh, I study this and I practice this and I utilize this and then it starts to actually uh, sink in and go deep into your subconscious mind. So, mm -hmm. um, which is where all, all of our learning is stored deep in the subconscious. 
-hmm. or unconscious part of your mind. Because mm -hmm. that's the autopilot. I mean, right. we, you think about going throughout our day, just in this office, there's so much crap that you could um, focus on, but our brains need to generalize or delete information or not focus on things, you know. I, consequently, when people come into the office, um, and I bring them into, uh, or they come into the lobby, I bring them in my office. I'll ask them when I'm talking about all the things that are stored in your unconscious, subconscious mind. I said, do you remember what the picture was on the wall on to the left when you first walked in? Mm -hmm. No idea. And I said, would it be different if it were a picture of you? Absolutely. You walk in and see a big picture of yourself up there. Sure. You'd be like, why do they have a big picture of me? That's, that's so strange. Right. Where did they get that picture from? Is that my, one of my best pictures? Was that on, did I post that? You know, like, because it would draw your attention to it. So right. think about all the things that are stimulating us throughout our day. Our conscious mind is trying to decipher and deal with and take it all in. It's got to uh, create a streamlined, automatic process, which is what the subconscious mind does. All the things we've learned are stored in there so right. we can easily do or react to that situation. You see brake lights in front of you. You don't have to think, I wonder what those red lights on the back of the car mean. Right. You've already learned that it means that car is stopped or slowing down, and right. therefore I have to step on my brake pedal in order to slow down or stop too to match that. But right. you don't think about it. It's not a conscious mm -hmm. process. You're just observing, and you just automatically do it. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot of automatic thoughts, and these are all stored in our unconscious mind. So for us, learning to be independent, learning to keep our emotions tucked in, this is our programming in our subconscious, unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And so in order to learn that, uh, we can't just toss that or empty our cup. We have to learn a new way of interacting with the world. And that takes a lot of work on, on our part. It takes repetition and practicing uh, uh, to, to adopt that new way. And then once we adopt that new way, the old one eventually will wither and atrophy and die mm -hmm. off. Until you least expect it, and then it's going to pop up again. <laughs> it might. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Which is and then we have to be with, careful. Right. But, you know, it's just like anything that you do. It takes practice and consistency, mm -hmm. right? Um, exercise, diet, nutrition, whatever you want to do yeah. um, in your life, it takes practice. So, and it's repetition, it's consistency, which is why we talk about the five basic things that everyone should master and work on all the time. Mm -hmm. Those five basic things. Sleep, a good sleep schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Some kind of seven, six, seven, eight hour sleep schedule that's pretty consistent. Some basic nutrition, eating some good food instead of just garbage all the time. Because uh -huh. when you eat garbage, you feel like garbage. When you eat good food, you feel better. Yeah. Right? Some kind of exercise, move that body, get out and do something every mm -hmm. day. Well, it, go for a walk. If it's rain, you can't go for a walk. Do some, like, do some body weight squats or lift up something heavy a couple times. Yeah, right. Do something. Have some kind of schedule, right? Have at least a plan of what you're doing for the day. I get up at this time. I'm going to do some exercise. I'm going to eat breakfast. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to sure. do this, whatever. And then the fifth thing is... Drink water. Drink water. Yeah. Wait, like like one yeah. of these things? Yeah. <laughs> so yes, um, you know we live in Florida, so we have to pay particular attention to keeping mm -hmm. hydrated, particularly in the summer months here. But um, water is so important. Yeah. Um, more water than you think. You need more water than you think. Yeah, I mean, like for most of us, a half gallon is probably like the bare minimum. Right. For sure. To, to be drinking. You know, and when you're hydrated and when you consistently are hydrated mm -hmm. and you're drinking 64 ounces or more, you feel, you feel better. Right. Like, I know you got to run to the restroom regularly, but you, just, you sleep better, hey. you perform better, you move better. Everything is functioning uh, better. You're working that, you're exercising your urinary tract. <laughs> yeah. And app, just water. Right. Like, you know, not La Crotch uh, or La <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, which I love, I, you know, uh, love me some lacrosse, right. uh, um, <laughs> bubbly water. Yeah, this uh -huh. is good, um, but just regular water, not diet coke. Yeah. You know, which I also have enjoyed. You know, but um, just drinking a good old fashioned water, consuming right. uh, a lot of it. Water, it, fizz or still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so those five things are really important to uh, to master, and oftentimes. Uh, if somebody is struggling or having a problem, if we address those things, mm -hmm. that actually might eliminate the problem. 
so, for the challenge. Uh oh, here we're gonna do we're gonna do one of those therapy secrets, right? Behind the curtain, we're gonna tell people like the magic of therapy, right? Pull the curtain back. So we talk about these five things all the time because they're very important, and it is the base of making you feel better, right? You, yeah. When you're building a house, you got to build the you know you got to start from the bottom up. You don't start on the second floor. You can't start with all the high therapy techniques. You can't talk about psychodynamic stuff. We don't jump in to write some of the heavy stuff right away. The hierarchy right? of needs. The definitely. hierarchy of needs, right? So when you build a house, you got to build that foundation. Those five things, when we and we, you and I, I think are very similar in our practice in that we talk about those five things session one, mm -hmm. right? So we start there. And then when you come back to us, session two and three, we're going to ask about those five things. And we're curious, number one, to see if you're doing that and to see if it's having an effect for you. But the secondary gain we get from that is, can you stick to a plan? Uh -huh. <laughs> can you set a goal for yourself and, and, and stick to it right. and practice it? Because yeah. if you can't attend to the five basic things, then you're not probably indication is to us is you're probably not going to put the time into doing some of the higher level therapy work. Right. So if I have these great things in cognitive behavioral therapy, homework for you to do and start right. engaging with in order to change your thoughts and your thought patterns to be more positive and for you to actually learn uh, ways in which to do that moving forward, even mm -hmm. without me, and you're not mastering those just simple right. tasks uh, for your own health and well-being, mm -hmm. then um, you, you're not going to be able to attend to those. You, you right. might be able to do the homework, but it's not going to be right. uh, as lasting or impactful uh, for right. you. If if you can't uh, get to a basic sleep schedule and you know uh, and get ten, 15 minutes of exercise every day, then I'm not probably going to talk to you about mood journaling and <laughs> right. you know scaling on moods and those kinds of things. Yeah. you know. And throw out working on your New Year's resolution type of plans, you right. know. Um, and anytime you introduce something new, like let's say you are not exercising, and now you start exercising, uh, there's not just you putting on your workout clothes and going to the gym. It's a lifestyle change if right. you want to maintain that. So right. you're going to have to get better sleep in order mm -hmm. to recover. Yeah, you're going sure. to have to rest. You're mm -hmm. going to get uh, proteins, you know, and... Uh, to repair the muscle tissue, you're going to need carbohydrates so that you can actually have energy to do the, right. the workout. You're going to need water, more water, because you need to replenish the things that you've lost if you were sweating, you know, mm -hmm. or doing heavy bouts of cardio or something. Sure. And your body is going to have to adapt to that new stimulus. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be sore. Uh, you're you're going to be irritable um, if you're older. You know, like us, your knees are going to hurt, your back's going <laughs> to hurt, your neck's going to hurt. You know, yeah. like. And we just have to deal with those things. We have to push through and, or power through uh, or just deal with those uh, as they come up. And to not quit. I think that's uh, what ends mm -hmm. up happening to people is you go on a diet and you're doing great for two weeks and you're starting to feel better. You're starting to maybe lose a little bit of weight and you start, your clothes start to feel better. And then you have a weekend where you, you know, have pizza and you and a couple you of beers and, <clears throat> this and then, yeah. Yeah, I do it, right? And then... Um, you say, well, you know what? I've already screwed up. Right, I'm blown. So I've blown it. Now I quit right. my whole diet. You know what? Just just get back to doing what you were doing, because eventually right. it's going to pay off. It's going to work out for you. It's just that you know, like the the diet or the body that you mm -hmm. want is not going to happen day one in the gym. Right. You're probably not going to realize it until day ninety. Right. And you'll start to actually like see the the benefits sure. of it, and other people are going to be seeing those things too. Yeah. So. Um, and then the other thing that I, I, I hear and see people do all the time is, oh, since I've blown it, I'll just start over on Monday. On Monday. And How then Tuesday times? night, there's, you know, some dart tournament or, or trivia or <laughs> there's a great movie right. on or the, yeah. the Republican debate. So I have to eat a bunch of crap just right. to get through that thing. <laughs> I want tacos. <laughs> so then you blow it on Tuesday and you're like, oh, crap. Well, I've blown it now, so I'll just I have a week, well. and then I'll just start again next Monday. Yep. No, every day is a Monday. Every minute is a Monday. Yeah. You can restart like now. Right. So you go out on Friday and Saturday night, and you do whatever you do and eat a bunch of garbage, and then you get up Sunday, and like, here we go. It's yeah. Monday. Yeah. Sunday morning can be your Monday, mm -hmm. so you don't have to wait for some specific date. Uh-uh. Because if you're waiting, then you're always going to be waiting. You're always right. going to be putting it off. Right. I talked to somebody... Um, uh, and this was actually last year. There's a lot of people that do dry January, right? Oh, so right. Okay. No, no alcohol for January. 
which is a great thing for some people to do. And I was talking to somebody last year, um, and it was a, a, a woman about, around my age. And she said, I did dry January. It was great. My skin's better. I'm sleeping better, you know. And she didn't drink a lot. You know, she would have a glass of wine with dinner and, you yeah. know, cocktail here and there. I mean, you know, social drinker. And um, she said, I felt so much better. And, uh, um, and, but I couldn't wait for February to come so I could have a glass of wine with dinner. <laughs> to celebrate. I was like, you feel so much better. <laughs> What's what the problem? Yeah. Because it's habit. People form these habits. Yep. You know, we watched our parents um, come home from work and make a cocktail every single day. Yeah. And they made cocktails, like mm-hmm. martinis and Manhattans. And, you know, they made cocktails. Shakers and strainers and, yeah. you know, olives and a, whatever, you know. And we watched that. And that's what we thought we had to do. Or when you had a bad day, you needed to have a drink. When you had a great day, you needed to celebrate yeah. and have a drink. You know, everything was a reason to have a drink. Um, um, but that's not how it has to be. And yeah. it, it's just because it's habit. It's what people have learned. Mm-hmm. So change your habits. Yeah. You know? You don't like your hairstyle, so change it. Mm-hmm. You don't like waking up feeling crappy in the morning, so change it. Change your diet. Change your alcohol intake. Change right. your sleep patterns. Change yeah. your whatever. 100%. This is something that uh, we at our generation can bestow on uh, the younger uh, generation. Um, and of course, the thought that I had five minutes ago is gone out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on a lot of people, Tom. I talk and all their, all their <laughs> thoughts go also, south of the border. If, uh, if you made a comment or asked a question and you'd, we didn't uh, get to it, uh, please ask again. Uh, sorry, we're one of the downsides of being our generation and not growing up with phones and devices is right. that we're, we're trying to we're, monitor here. We're not we're not so uh, attentive uh, uh, to it. So um, anyway, uh, please say it again, and uh, and we're going to be doing this every Friday, ten fifteen ish. So uh, please come come back and and ask, or you can send your questions in to questions at therapyonzipped dot com. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll we'll answer we'll answer them uh, on the show uh, in the next uh, podcast, and mm-hmm. usually you'll get an email from uh, one of us, uh, kind of addressing that and offering some help and guidance along the way. So, right. Um, so I guess just in you know to kind of sum up what we were talking about today is, people in different generations are all struggling, or some of, some of them are struggling with some of the same issues. Yeah. And it's because of some of the environmental things. It's you know where you grew up and how you grew up. But it's also like a lot of generational similarities. So uh, Gen Xers are struggling with some of a lot of the same things. Our kids are struggling with a lot of the same things. And it's, um, it's, not, you know, it's not your parents' fault. They did the best that they could. We all, as parents, have done the best we can you know, with, the, w- with what we had. Um, so it's not a, you know, you can't blame your parents. I mean, that, yeah. if you want to have five minutes to blame your parents, that's great. You got five minutes and then it's over. So sure. now what? You know, the whole question with therapy is, so now what? <laughs> so now what? And th- this is a concept that I really love that is uh, um, uh, frowned upon, <laughs> let's right. say, that especially from the younger generation, because, well, you're not being, you know, um, understanding of, of my, like, needs and, and my emotional state and, right. and whatnot. And I guess that that triggered the thought that I had about what we as our generation can bestow upon right. uh, the younger uh, people. And of course we can learn from them too, and sure. I'll get into that. So here's the, the, the lesson. Um, when you need to be more adult-like, I don't know, we, I don't know if we can define that, um, but uh, if you need to be more professional and you need to communicate well and you need to make sure you get your needs uh, met, uh, and you need people to respond to you as an adult, Um, you need to separate, remove your uh, emotions from it. Mm -hmm. This is the best way I can describe it. So if you are interacting with the boss and the, the, the boss is criticizing your work or wanting you to do better in this particular area or just questioning why you happen to make a habit of coming in later than your, your actually shift your shift starts and you get emotional about it and you start well this is the reason why I'm late and you don't understand me and you don't write all these things boss doesn't want to hear any of that right. boss doesn't care so to be a professional to be more adult like we have to remove that emotional component and once you do that you're operating from your rational mind. Mm-hmm. 
um, which is which is good in these situations when you need to communicate effectively to somebody else and get them to understand you. Because right. not everybody's going to be emotionally intelligent where they can read between the lines and understand your emotions and kind of decipher it and still see you as an adult. Oftentimes, especially our generation, if somebody is coming to us in an emotional state, we view them more childlike. Mm -hmm. So we're going to respond to them. Right. This is transactional analysis yeah. from a parent right. perspective. Uh, I need to school you. I need to take care of you. I need you uh, are, are dependent on somebody else. You are not in control uh, of yourself. Right. Um, and so if you remove that emotional component, I'm not saying this is the best course of action, but I'm just saying if you need to communicate right. effectively and be professional, you remove that emotional component. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's operating from your, your rational, logical mind. Right. Now, our generation grew up with Excuses do not abdicate responsibility. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? You can have all the excuses in the doesn't world matter. for being late, for, you know, for being late. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't absolve you of your responsibility to be here on time, period. Yeah. So, you know. I missed I, the bus. The yeah, dog it, ate my homework. I the got house a flat was on tire. Fire. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? So what people in our generation want to hear when, as bosses is, I apologize for being late. It won't happen again. Yeah. That's all I want to hear. Yeah, that's it. Recognize that you're late and just you'll take steps and you can't, you can't guarantee it won't happen again. Yeah. But you're going to do everything in your power to make sure it won't happen again. Yeah. And now what we can learn, which we're not good at, is that emotional part of our minds. Right. We're not good at assessing that or mm -hmm. addressing it or dealing with it because we operate more so on the rational part. And so what we can learn from the other generation is how to become more emotionally intelligent. Right. And... Uh, once we put the rational, this is DBT, by the way, uh -huh. put the rational and the emotional minds together, we have what uh, Dr. Lenahan calls the wise mind. Right. Um, and I think we can get better. We can all get better at doing that, at, at right. culminating what's rational, what's logical, and what are my emotions doing right now and being in control of those emotions and deciding what uh, I need to do with them or maybe I don't need to do anything with them, but right. I can join those and finding what's right for you and how to respond in a given situation. Right. Um, we got a great comment. No problem. problems are ever solved when we're upset. You're absolutely right. 100%. Yeah. So that's why we shut that stuff down. We fix the problem. We'll have our emotional reaction to it later. Sure. Right? So how many times have you had a bad interaction with a boss? Right? Just shut that emotional down. Take care of what you have to. And then we're going to lament about that later to ourselves. Absolutely. <laughs> with, your, with your spouse whom you right. trust or, or with a friend right. or in therapy or whatnot. We can uh -huh. go through that. Get that all out. Uh -huh. Process it. You know, because I'm, you know, spent a career at validating other people's emotions. Right. For sure. Uh, so I've gotten good at recognizing the emotions. But if I didn't become a therapist or I, I were not in this line of work uh, right. for sure uh -huh. uh, I'd be more like you know shut your mouth and just deal with it and right. suck it up whatever you know mm -hmm. um, type of guy I'll give but, you something to cry about yeah for <laughs> sure uh, thank you guys for being here and yeah. for joining um, well we don't have to close now right now but it, like I said if you uh, commented and you were here and you enjoyed the show um, uh, please feel free to drop us a line, um, check out Suggestible Mind, and also Therapy Unzipped, anywhere you listen to podcasts, and send us your questions, questions yeah. at therapyunzipped.com. Every Friday, 10, 15-ish, we'll be uh, doing this, so uh, please come back and, uh, and sure. support us. There's, what, 15 episodes or so of Therapy Unzipped? 27. 27. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. I was half in it, you know. <laughs> I didn't want We it, tend yeah. to minimize things. That's just what we do. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So there's 27 episodes out there. There's some really good stuff out there. Yeah. I encourage people to uh, go back and listen to some of those, uh, those old episodes. We've done, uh, we've talked about depression. We've talked about anxiety. We've talked about EMDR. We've talked about personality disorders. Yeah. Um, psychosis. That was a fun one. Yeah, personality. Check gotta, that one out. We've got to get back. We've got to do another one about personality disorders. Absolutely. Some of my favorites. Mm -hmm because we see him on TV all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate it. Yeah. It'll be 28 today, 28, 28 episodes. So I'll post this later on. You can check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank all you right. again. Send in your questions and let us know what you want us to talk about uh, next right. show. Yeah, if there's something you want us to talk about, let us know for sure. Thank you guys again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the comments. And yeah. uh, I'll have my iPad next time, so I'll be... 
uh, better able to kind of glance through those because I can actually see the iPad as opposed to the phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying here. I did have my cheaters ready. So we're going to sign off so you'll see me uh, get up and fiddle around, try to find that button. But then <laughs> we'll see you, uh, see you next week. All right. Thank you, guys. Take Peace. care. <laughs>